All right. Hi, Taurus. Welcome to the third week of October. Ooh, the cards are already flying out. Welcome to the third week of October. The deck that I'm using this week is called the Us Tarot Tarot. That's O-S-T-A-R-A -A Tarot. And it's a gorgeous deck. I've had this deck for uh, a little bit. Well, probably a little bit longer than a lot than a little bit. But um It's a gorgeous deck. It's easy to read. I think that if you guys are interested in starting up tarot, this is definitely a good deck. Interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and take all these cards. I'm going to keep shuffling, but I do want to note that right here we got the uh, the world card. And there you are, Taurus. It has all the fixed signs on it. Sorry, let me get that up here so you guys can kind of see. It has all the fixed signs, and then right here is Taurus. Oh, there it is again, the world card. See, I, I feel like you guys are still coming off of your intuition from last week, I believe, where it was that you got the priestess. It was either last week or the week before that you guys got the high priestess that popped out and then came out again in the reading. So it could be that you guys have something in that reading that could also help you this week. But uh, overall energy is really interesting because you have the world card, which is finish, which is the termination of something. Not necessarily in a bad sense. The world card talks about finishing something off and in that coming into a new beginning. So after the world card, it cycles straight back to the full card, which incidentally was the very first card that popped out in your reading. However, the full card is in reverse which is really interesting to me. I think, because like the Fool card talks about new beginnings. It talks about the blankest of blanks, lates, um, and for some reason it's upside down. So what that tells me is that you guys are going into a new situation, finishing up whatever has happened in the past, and there's one of two things that's gonna happen to you, either, you're gonna feel like you finished with this situation just to be pulled right back or the full in reverse is a warning to not fall into your old patterns. And I feel like for a lot of you, it might be that. I feel like you guys have the tendency to find very similar people or attract similar people into your life. And I feel like that's so you can learn something. And it, obviously like if you're attracting abusive people in your life, don't blame yourself for anything or try to like be the only person that's responsible in a toxic relationship but maybe you have to learn how to deal with people who are less than reputable people i should say well not reputable the word is like less than good i guess because i'm seeing the devil i'm seeing the three of swords i'm seeing that ten of swords like it, there's a lot of hurt here the devil could also talk about a Capricorn, so for some of you guys that are dealing with a Capricorn, that might be relevant. But it's always inter interesting to me to see, I always say this, it's always interesting to see how the devil card is depicted in each deck. And in some decks, you have a sexual terror, or a sexual devil who chains people by their sexuality. Um, and in other decks, you have this kind of devil who is much more mischievous. This devil focuses so much more on the entrapment of people than a sexual devil. Like last week, 
I was using um, the Crystal Visions Tarot. I couldn't remember right off the top of my head what it was called. And I remember I pulled the devil card for someone there and it was so much more attuned to sexuality. So here, what I'm getting is that there's a lot of mind games. There could be a lot of toxic energy, I feel. I feel like there's, you have somebody in your life who has basically created this toxic relationship with, and I feel like that's hindering you more than it's helping you right now. And with this Three of Swords, like, you've been hurt by it. With this Ten of Swords, you've been betrayed. Like, to me, I feel like the Three of Swords is heartbreak, but the Ten of Swords is, like, a step beyond heartbreak. So I feel like you guys are at a point where you're, like, so done with being hurt and so done with being emotionally manipulated or whatever. And for some of you, it might be not as extreme, but, like, you're so done with this person being such a negative energy in your life, such a negative element that you're sort of, you've gone numb to it. And I feel like that could be blocking a lot of the things in your life. But I feel like you've been working on the situation with the seven of cups, sorry, seven of wands. Oh, sorry, my bad, seven of pentacles. So since I mentioned the cups and the wands, seven of wands talks about fighting for what you believe in and the seven of cups means for me personally I interpret it as like manifestation of your daydreams so you know all of those are pretty related energies because the seven of pentacles talks about you sort of reaping what you've sown and I feel like you've put a lot of work and energy towards fixing the situation whatever that may look like to you and with this Knight of, Knight of Swords here, uh, for some of you that might look like cutting this person off, or it might be like cutting off the illusion that they're necessary in your life. Because a lot of times people who are toxic will sort of lie or like over exaggerate their place in your life, that kind of stuff. But whatever they've told you, you are now in a place where you have your feet fir firmly planted on the ground and you're cutting through their deception and their lies or whatever and you're seeing the situation for what it is and who they are and there's more clarity here. And the reason I know that is because with this nine of pentacles and this ten of cups, like you are in a, in a position where you're powerful now. The nine of pentacles talks about, I like to call it the single and ready to mingle card. Uh, but I feel like in this particular instance, you're really realizing what the depths of your value are. And with this Ten of Pentacles, sorry, this Ten of Wands, my bad, the Ten of Cups. I'm, I'm going too many places at once. So Ten of Pentacles is one step above the Nine of Pentacles. And that's when you have both reached your Nine of Pentacles status and you're ready to share your wealth and your abundance with someone else. And I feel like that's what you're working towards with this Ten of Cups. Um, I was gonna say with the Ten of Wands, it's very similar energy to the Ten of Swords that we have here, right next to that uh, Ten of Cups. And like I was saying earlier, don't feel like you're the only one responsible for maintaining a relationship between two people. Don't feel like the entire burden is put on you like we see with the Ten of Wands. And in this Ten of Cups, what I was going to say is, earlier when I was speaking about the depths of your value, like these two people are underwater. They are at the bottom of the ocean. And honestly, it looks like they're statues. Like they've been immortalized in time. And I feel like for a lot of you, if this isn't like someone from the past with your full card in reverse... It could be that someone new is coming and they're sort of, I, I see them as a very clear replacement for this toxic energy. You know, with this page of, page of wands here and this page of, and this, sorry, page of wands and knight of cups. Like to me, it feels like you have somebody who is really getting ready, really getting their ducks in a row. 
um, they're going through some evolution. I know that last week and maybe like the week before you had a sort of immature fire sign. Well, now I get that they're jumping from immature to a lot more mature, you know? Like they're not the king or queen yet, but they are the knight. And I feel like for some of you, it could be, you know, that this person, it, it might not be as serious as a toxic relationship, but it could be that, you know, this person was immature in the past, said things that hurt you, you know, there were arguments, there were fights, whatever. And now they're sort of like, hey, uh, I'm sorry that I did those things. I'm sorry that, you know, I, I was too dumb to see that this wasn't good for us. I'm coming different. And I feel like that's up to you to decide whether you want them in your life or not. Um, obviously, if it was a small offense, you know, it might not be worth the entire relationship to say no because, you know, it was a petty argument. But if it was obviously something much bigger, much more important, uh, definitely take that into consideration and you'll know, um, you yourself will know in your situation whether or not to forgive this person, whether or not this is the toxic person in your life, all those things will come to you because you're so intuitive right now, especially with this world card. I feel like even though the high priestess isn't here, you're still in that sort of residual energy from the past where whatever you, you're like imagining or thinking is like the reality around you. So that was your reading for the third week of October. Uh, I encourage you guys to please subscribe, leave a comment or a like if you enjoyed the video. And I hope to see you guys next week for your last reading of October.